regarding the synovial joints we will be discussing the characteristic features of the synovial joints and the various types and examples of synovial joints okay types and examples of synovial joints and not only types what are the various movements occurring at the various synovial joints okay so features of the synovial joints types movements and examples of synovial joints we will be discussing shortly okay so yes so let's talk about the characteristic features of the synovial joints okay already you know they are the most mobile joints and they are the most common type of joints most common type of joints and the most mobile joints and what is the another name for the synovial joints yes they are also known as diarthrosis okay they are otherwise known as diarthrosis isn't it fine so the four characteristic features of synovial joints are they will be having fibrous capsule okay they will be having synovial membrane they have articular cartilage and they have joint cavity can you please try to practice this diagram for the synovial joints showing the four characteristic features okay so you can see between the two bones there is presence of joint cavity between the two articulating bones okay and as you see here the articular surfaces of the bones they are lined by what articular cartilage isn't it the two articular surfaces of the bones they are covered by articular cartilage isn't it fine and other than articular cartilage can you see the fibrous capsule covering the articular surfaces okay the fibrous capsule encloses the articular surfaces except at the at the articular cartilage okay and you can see clearly the inner aspect of the fibrous capsule is lined by one thin membrane called a synovial membrane isn't it and this synovial membrane secretes one fluid namely yes synovial fluid synovial membrane secretes synovial fluid and what is the function of synovial fluid yes it is involved in minimizing the friction between the bones or you can say lubrication of joints minimizing the friction between the bones otherwise lubrication of the joints okay and so this is the same diagram uh, so please practice this diagram for the synovial joints showing the fibrous capsule and right now i am marking the articular cartilage articular cartilage this red color representing the articular cartilage fine and this a thin membrane will be there lining the inner aspect of the fibrous capsule called a synovial membrane and you can see the joint cavity filled with synovial fluid okay so please remember this is the articular cartilage in this diagram red color is representing the articular cartilage okay so please remember the few points about the articular cartilage okay this articular cartilage is mostly in majority of synovial joints the articular cartilage is mostly made up of what type of cartilage yes it is made up of hyaline cartilage it is made up of hyaline cartilage okay and this articular cartilage okay it is devoid of few things like it is devoid of perichondrium okay it is devoid of perichondrium and also it is devoid of blood supply that means it is avascular okay articular cartilage is avascular no blood supply okay and it is insensitive that means no nerve supply also no nerve supply also okay so it is devoid of perichondrium devoid of blood supply devoid of nerve supply also which one articular cartilage fine so please try to remember this various characteristic features of the various characteristic features of the synovial joints fine yes now let's talk about the various types of the synovial joints this slide shows the various types of synovial joints okay so the synovial joints can be classified into four types what are they yes number 1 plain synovial joints plain synovial joints uniaxial joints biaxial joints and the multiaxial joints okay plain uniaxial biaxial multiaxial okay 
fine so regarding the uni axe sorry plane synovial joints remember remember the movement possible is just gliding movements okay so the articular surfaces will be flat okay so plane synovial joints just allow gliding movements okay and the example for plane synovial joints there are numerous examples try to remember few few examples like intercarpal intertarsal joints intercarpal intertarsal and acromioclavicular joint all these are examples for plane synovial joints fine okay and one more thing we can try to remember is uh, all chondrosternal joints all chondrosternal joints except which one because that one is a classical example for primary cartilaginous exactly except the first except the first chondrosternal okay which is an example for primary cartilaginous joint okay all chondrosternal joints except the first chondrosternal yes yes let's talk about the uniaxial joints okay so regarding the uniaxial joints remember okay movements occur in one axis that's why it is called as uniaxial okay in this joints movements occur movements occur in one axis okay the the two subtypes of the uniaxial joints hp you can remember as h and p okay hp okay so i used to remember as hp laptop it is unique okay it is unique so the two types of uniaxial joints are hinge type of joint and pivot type of joint okay hinge and pivot okay so can you tell me in hinge joints what is the only possible movement yes flexion and the extension movements okay flexion and the extension movements okay and what is the classical example for hinge joint yes please remember the two examples for hinge joint one is elbow joint elbow joint another one is ankle joint okay these are the two common classical examples for hinge type of synovial joints elbow joint and ankle joint fine yes let's talk about the another type of uniaxial joints namely pivot joints in pivot joints only rotational movements take place rotational movements okay rotational movements the two classical examples for pivot joints are one is superior and inferior radio ulnar joints superior and inferior radio ulnar joints and another another one is atlanto axial joint between the first and the second cervical vertebrae c1 c2 joint okay atlanto axial joint where the rotational movements of head taking place fine so i hope you are clear about the examples for hinge joint and the pivot joints both belong to uniaxial joint okay so let's move to the biaxial joints okay as the name clearly indicates biaxial joints okay movements occur in movements occur in two axes that's why it is called as biaxial okay movements occur in two axes biaxial okay and there are two subtypes of the biaxial joints okay remember by ec okay ec ec these are the two types of the biaxial joints that is ellipsoid e is representing ellipsoid and the c representing condylar joints fine okay so movements occur in two axes that's why biaxial okay so what are the two types of movements occurring at the ellipsoid type of biaxial joint yes one is flexion and extension flexion and extension another one is abduction and adduction okay write in full form please write in full form flexion and extension abduction and adduction okay the classical example for ellipsoid joint is wrist joint wrist joint okay and one more we can try to remember is atlanto okay atlanto occipital joint atlanto occipital joint between the atlas vertebra and the occipital bone we have one joint called as atlanto occipital joint that is also example for ellipsoid okay what about the condylar joint yes condylar joint also biaxial okay so there are two types of movements taking place one is flexion and extension another one is rotational movements 
medial rotation and the lateral rotation movements okay so the two examples for condylar joints one is knee joint and another one is temporo mandibular joint okay between the temporal bone of both sides and the mandible bone we have the temporo mandibular joint okay so knee joint and temporo mandibular joint both belong to condylar type of synovial joint isn't it yes let's move to the last type of synovial joint that is multi axial joint okay so as the name implies movements occur in three axes okay three axes so it is called as multi axial joint again it is also subdivided into two types one is saddle type another another one is ball and socket okay so ball and socket type of synovial joint multi axial joint all the three ranges of movements are possible flexion extension abduction adduction medial rotation and lateral rotation okay and you know the two two classical examples for ball and socket isn't it one is shoulder joint another one is hip joint isn't it yes finally coming to the saddle joint in saddle joint the three types of movements are flexion and extension abduction and adduction another one is rotational movements called as conjunct rotation simply remember rotational movements okay and the classical example for saddle joint is first carpo metacarpal joint first carpo metacarpal joint okay yes that's the end of the discussion topic of joints okay thank you all